Good morning, everyone. Happy Epiphany. I hope everyone is safe and well on this fine morning. I can't wait for a time when we can all worship together again in person soon. However, we're continuing to worship from home for a while um, as we continue to navigate this pandemic. To let you all know, the office will be closed this week due to escalation of the pan pandemic and the COVID-19, and I will be at home. Um, please feel free to reach me through text, phone call, messenger, whatever means you need to and want to. You can reach out to me, um, and I will be available. Also, I we will be postponing till later in the spring the series book study on stamped till we can have more participation throughout the congregation so stay tuned for alerts for the upcoming dates of that we will proceed with a Lenten study in the coming weeks as well and I will get you word on that as soon as that information is available again I hope everyone is safe and well I know people are are tired and it's difficult to not see each other in person, but I'm so glad that we have this wonderful way that we can worship together, um, knowing that you all are in my hearts and prayers. I'd like to invite us into an attitude of worship with a moment of silence, and then I will offer a prayer. O oh God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Listen for a word from God. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, and because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe that the love that God has for us, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect. Perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or a sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from this is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning we begin a new sermon series. We are going to be covering This We Believe, the core of Wesleyan faith and practice by Bishop William H. Williman. It is a wonderful book that helps us establish more of our Wesleyan heritage and the belief systems and doctrines that we hold as a part of our tradition and church. Um, it's a really good read. I would encourage you all to perhaps purchase the book. Uh, you could follow along or read it at your leisure. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about um, first of all, John Wesley. For those who aren't aware, John Wesley is the founder of what we believe and know to be the Methodist movement. He was born in 1703 and lived to 1791. He was ordained as an Anglican priest in the Church of England, and that is how he spent his years uh, throughout his life as serving serving the church. And for many, we understand for John Wesley that serving the church helped him explore what it meant to live a life of holiness, what it meant to, to strive for Christian perfection. And we understand that John Wesley led a life where he really spent so much time entrenched into the concept of grace and the various um, patterns of grace that we find throughout our life. And so as we explore over the next few weeks these different belief systems that we hold dear in our Wesleyan heritage and in the United Methodist Church, we'll learn a little bit more about John Wesley and how he chose to live his life, but also how we as Methodists come to believe today and how that should shape us as we live out our lives as individuals and our life as a church. And so I, I hope that we all can 
spend some good quality time in exploring the concepts. The first concept and is the first chapter that we are covering today, and that is that we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, I can remember in my early years of ministry, it was quite something getting to teach confirmation for the first time. And I was surprised at how few of the kids I taught had even heard the concept of the Trinity. And I think that's something that churches often fail to really discuss or live out their lives embodying because we focus either so much on God or, or perhaps some churches focus are more Jesus-centric. Um, but the concept of the Trinity somehow gets left behind a little bit. Um, so today, this first chapter is that we believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So as we know, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the three persons of the Trinity, um, but we still believe in one God. So we are a monotheistic faith. Believe, faith we believe in one God, but we believe in three persons of the Trinity. So it then people start going, what? What do you mean? There are three. How can that be one? Um, so it's it's complicated, right? This These are, are a theology that has had people perplexed, really, from the very beginning. But we, as people of God, understand that God is coming to us in a special and unique way. And so God is revealing God's self in the person of Jesus Christ. God is coming to us in the flesh, putting on flesh and living among us. God is, is being present with us. And that's what we just witnessed in this Christmas tide season is that God, Emmanuel, came to dwell amongst us, became incarnate into the world. And so we see that God is living out God's life in a different way. I think when, especially in my early years of ministry, as I would teach people about God, and, and there was always this far-removed sense of God was up here, um, and, and that God created everything, and the world became to be, and then God kind of just is over there, um, where you guys can't see. Um, and and we, we don't feel like God is as in the thick of things. Like God is, is, is above us, ethereal, all-powerful, omnipotent, you know, um, that God, God is bigger than we can grasp. And... What this is telling us and what our Wesleyan beliefs are, are helping us kind of ground in us is that God is not just up here. God is not just some grand concept for us to uh, emanate and, and, and worship from afar. God chose instead to reveal God's self in the three persons of the Trinity. And we find that those three persons of the Trinity reach us in different ways and in different contexts as people of God and as the church. And so I love um, that Bishop Williman really begins to explore this kind of correlation between God, Christ, Spirit, and for us, how that those can be intrinsically linked. Um, I'm going to read a, a quotation from Bishop Williman. He says, In Jesus of Nazareth, God got physical, um, explicit, and peculiar. God came close, too close for comfort for many. Jesus Christ is God in action. God refusing to remain a general idea or high-sounding principle, end quote. And again, this, this 
this narrative that Bishop Willimon is setting for us as uh, believers of, of God and, and Christ and as United Methodist is reminding us that God is amongst us. God is very real right now. God is very present right now. God is not um, away from us, but God is in our midst. And how that begins, if we begin taking that into our heads and into our hearts, what that does is help shape us in how we choose to live out our faith. Because if we think of God as far removed up here and thinking that God is just a good idea, we're not going to take it in as much. But when we hear that kind of Jesus Christ is God in action, that he says that God is 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 here, God is present in Christ, then that's calling us to action as well. That's that's saying that God is supposed to live in us and dwell in us just as God comes to dwell in the person of Jesus Christ. And so if we start believing that as Christians, as United Methodists, how do we choose to go out into the world? How do we choose to live our lives next to our neighbors? How do we uh, want to, to explain ourselves um, to the people around us? What image and actions do we have to back up our own faith, our own belief in God and the Trinity and Father, Son, Spirit? So this morning, as we think about that, it's really about how we can understand God with us. And so, um, again, another quote from Bishop Williman. He has that Wesley didn't just teach some banal platitude like God is love. He taught that God is wonderfully interactive, resourceful, responsive love. Love that not only acts for us in the cross and resurrection on the vast stage of world history, but also, also graciously acts in us, deep within our souls, activating our own hands and feet in witness and service so that we adoringly respond to God who so lovingly responded to us. I love that. I I love that he puts it this way. Just like our text from 1 John this morning, we understand that God is love, right? That, that is the clear message, that God is love, and that that love is made manifest in Christ. And those who choose to have that manifested love live out in their own lives and manifested through them then abide with God, because God is abiding with them. So we can really understand that that God in action, that pers the, the Trinity dwelling with us, amongst us, in us, is helping to propel us to lead a life of Christian love and service. Which for John Wesley, again, the founder of the Methodist movement, we truly understand for him that that is what it was all about. It was about how we can live our lives as people of God. How can we do good? How can we worship God? How can we serve those who need help? How can we choose to live a life of love and service and holiness in a world that so often puts this grandiosity of God above a God that is present and right in front of us and is raw and choosing to eat with sinners and tax collectors and prostitutes. Um, we're seeing a God that is in the nitty-gritty and saying, you want to follow me, you get in the nitty-gritty too. And we as a church fail to do this often. Um, not to say that we don't do it at all. We certainly do. Um, I believe that God uses us all the time. But we can do more. We can get in the nitty-gritty more. We can lead that life of 
action and servitude even more and every day we can do better. I can do better. No question. I will put that there. We as Christians must look for the life of love and service and understand that God is with us. And as we understand that this is one of the key tenets of not only the Christian faith, but our faith as United Methodists, our faith in how we are meant to live and be and dwell as a church, then that should help shape us and help us understand that God is not just some ideal, but God is present through Christ, through the Spirit. God has been made known to us. And while we can, can't say that we have ever seen God, we have, though. We have seen God in Christ. We have seen God in our neighbors. We have seen God's love and Spirit be made known to us time and time again. Whether it's from someone that doesn't even claim Christ as their own, that doesn't mean that Christ isn't there. So today, I ask us to really think about your time in your church, your time as believers of God, your time as Christians, and ask yourself what it is that you believe. As, as a clergy person in the United Methodist Church, we had to spend countless hours undergoing and examining ourselves and trying to remember what it is that we believe and really help kind of deduct our own belief system. And we had to answer all of these doctrinal questions about who is God, who is Christ, who is the Holy Spirit, what is sin, uh, what do you believe about Scripture, um, all of these kind of fundamental questions. And in some ways, I think that's something that every Christian really needs to engage and understand and be able to break down what it is that they believe. What, what doctrinal beliefs do you have? What dogmas do you follow? And how, as a Christian, are you going to choose to then believe and live? Believe and live into those realities. And so today... I want us to, you know, to examine the concepts that we find that are a part of our Wesleyan heritage, but then say, okay, this is something that I'm supposed to believe as a United Methodist. What does that mean about what I'm doing? What does that mean about how I live every day of my life? Does that mean I should change some behaviors? Does that mean I could do something differently? It's good to question. It's good to, to remember and to seek that path of holiness and perfection. You know, we may never reach perfection until we come into God's glory in heaven. But as United Methodists and as people who follow a Wesleyan theology, we are supposed to be striving for that perfection, that sanctification in God and in Christ. And today I want you to think about how the Trinity is indwelling within you, right? The, that God abiding in you. I want you to, to really kind of let that encapsulate who you are right now and know that all the mess in the world is big and str people are struggling and yet we have a God that is abiding in us. A God that is present, not a God that's just far removed, but a God that is here. And having God that is here should reflect on how we choose to live our moments right now and our moments from each day to come. So I ask you to, to pray on that, to, to let that sit with you and to mar marinate uh, throughout this week and really begin to piece together what it is you think and feel um, about the presence of God in your own life. Maybe do some journaling, um, draw a picture, whatever it might be. But I ask you to really kind of hold on to that this week.
and we'll check again next week about our, our next level to get to. But I'd like to invite us into a moment of prayer. Holy God, God, you are parent, you are Christ, you are spirit. You come to us this day knowing that we are struggling. We're struggling with so many realities that are happening and swirling around us. For some, that means illness and sickness within our family or our friends' lives. For some, that means struggling to make ends meet, to put the food on the table or to provide the necessary resources for our families. For some, it could be an emotional whirlwind, a time where one is feeling low. But our triune God, we worship you, and we know that you are in us. We ask that you abide in us and we in you, that we celebrate you and remember to turn to you during all of the trials and all of the times that feel so difficult and helpless and exhausting. Be with us in this new year that we may take the time to turn to you, that we may seek you out, that we may live a life that's worthy of your name. We ask this in the name of our triune God. Amen. As Christians, one of the ways that we help celebrate and affirm our faith is through prayer. 
is through ritual, is through creedal statements. And so today it's a, it's a creed we have all probably grown up with in some way or another, but it's not one that's generally read or prayed every Sunday. However, I felt that as we really begin to kind of get down into the basics of our, our faith and what it is we believe as Christians and as United Methodists, that there is no more a greater time to really focus in on the Apostles' Creed um, than right now. So each week as we read our, our book and we celebrate the different belief systems that we have as Christians and United Methodists, we will also focus in on the Apostles' Creed. So I ask you to bow your head. You feel free to uh, pray along with me or to just listen um, and really hear the words um, that we have said time and time again. Um, or if you've never said them at all, listen and and for a word from God, and, and may you feel the Spirit move. But I ask us into an attitude of prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, as children of God, may you go forth into the world to love and to serve, knowing that God abides in you and you abide in God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.